Okay, the fourth type of ion, as we see down here, are the polyatomic ions. And whereas the prefix mono means one, poly means many. So these are ions that are polyatomic. In other words, they're made up of many atoms. They're actually a charged group of atoms. So it's a group of atoms that is charged. Not each one, not each atom, each individual atom is charged. It's <clears throat> the whole group put together. And basically it's put together through what we call covalent bonding, as we'll see in chapter nine. So these are covalently bonded things that um, molecules <clears throat> that end up having uh, an equal num unequal number of protons and electrons. They're mostly anions. And uh, there's one exception to the anions. Ammonia is the only exception we'll use. Uh, there are others, but they're, they're not seen very often, so we don't use them very often. We might see some hydronium. Um, so let me go ahead and show you what I mean here. There's a list here of polyatomic ions. And on this chart here, on this table that I have right here, <clears throat> and these tables, by the way, will be put up so that you can go ahead and use them. Uh, I'll put them up in the uploads area. Um, each polyatomic ion has a formula that shows the grouping of elements. They all have one charge, and that one charge is for the whole group. And then they have a name. And these are just no getting around it. You just have to memorize the name, the formula, and the charge in order to be able to use them effectively. The first column are all negative one charge groups of atoms. The second column is a negative two ions, negative two uh, charged group of atoms. In other words, just in the whole structure, there are two more electrons than protons. That's what gives the whole structure um, a negative two charge. And uh, there are a couple of negative three ions, phosphorus, phosphorus ions, phosphate and phosphite. You'll notice that they both, uh, they usually end in eight or eight. Uh, a few of them end in ide, like the uh, monatomic ions, but they're not. They're polyatomic. Cyanide and hydroxide, I think, are the only exceptions that we have on this chart. These are, by no means, all of them. This is not an exhaustive list, but this is a good list that I work with. They're very common. And here's the deal, that we have to deal with these because they are very common. They're found in your foods. They're found in your DNA. They are just substances that are all over the place. I mean, we have sulfates and salts and detergents, uh, sometimes in preservatives. We have nitrates in our food sometimes. Um, uh, we use chlorates to do cleaning. Um, really, bleach is hypochlorite. Well, that's the main ingredient. Um, so uh, there's a lot of stuff. Rocks are mostly made of silicates. Uh, ammonium is very common cleaner. Acetate is found in a lot of medicines. And I mean, it's, it's basically vinegar. Um, or at least we find a lot of it in vinegar. So these are ubiquitous. Ubiquitous means that they're everywhere. Uh, we find them everywhere, so we have to kind of deal with them. There's a lot of carbonates in rocks and carbonates in shells. Um, and so um, we, we see them around in a lot of stuff. Um, this is kind of what they look like structurally. So if, for example, this is called nitrate, and NO3 with one negative charge. Basically what this is telling you is that there's a nitrogen attached to three hydrogens, and here, we see how they are. These are what's called Lewis structures, which we will learn about in chapter nine. But basically what this tells you is there's a nitrogen connected to three oxygens. One of them with two lines shows two bonds, two pairs of sharing electrons. We'll get into that later. You don't have to know that right now. What you've got to know now is that anything that's connected with lines is attached to each other. It's a covalent bond where uh, um, electrons are being shared. The point is all these are a group. And the whole group has a negative one charge. So whenever you bring in a nitrate, it has a negative one charge, like if you brought in a chloride, has a negative one charge. Or a bromide has a negative one charge. Okay. NH4 plus is ammonium. It's called ammonium. And basically, it's a nitrogen with four hydrogens. And here we see how it's put together. You don't have to know how they're put together. You just have to know the formula and the name. But what this means is there's one nitrogen and four hydrogens attached together somehow. And this is the somehow. And the whole thing has a plus one charge. Okay. I get a lot of students giving me charges right after every letter. No, you don't need. There's just one charge for the whole polyatomic ion. It's one ion. It's a polyatomic ion. So one ion um, made up of many atoms, polyatomic. 
This one is your acetate, which is, once again, very common in a lot of things. So C2H3O2, um, basically you got your two carbons here, your three hydrogens attached to one of the carbons, the two oxygens attached to the other carbon, and the whole thing together has a negative one charge. And here's your sulfate, SO4 negative two charge is sulfate. Um, you have one sulfur attached to four oxygens and um, you're going to have a negative charge on one this oxygen, negative charge on this oxygen. So the whole thing has two negative charges. Okay. This one was written a little different than the other ones. The other ones were written kind of like with the negative charge or the positive charge kind of diffused, showed how they were all attached. And then they, it was put into these little, this is very common to put it, the, the structure into brackets and then put a negative charge, I mean, put the charge in the upper right corner. This one did a little differently. It actually assigned the charge to specific oxygens, uh, but we could have written it the other way. Uh, both ways work for one reason or another, um, depending on what you're looking for. We could have put brackets here and not put the negatives here, but put a negative two in the upper right. right? So uh, that could have been done. Now, there's also on this periodic table of ions, there's also a list of these guys here too. Uh, and these guys are mostly the same, but there are others. So um, just know that, like I said, these tables of polyatomic ions not, aren't always the same. A lot of these are very uh, common. So you'll see them in all uh, tables, but when they fill out these tables, some people choose one, some, some people choose others. There are hundreds of these polyatomic ions, but these are some of the most common ones. And one thing to note, you're gonna note that a lot of them, just to make it kind of more simple, end in eight and eight, and they are made up of the same elements like this one right here. Um, let me see if I can make this a little bit bigger so we can see it a little easier. Uh, over here we have NO2 with one negative charge and NO3 with one negative charge. The polyatomic ion with one more oxygen ends in eight. The polyatomic ion with one less oxygen ends in eight. So this is nitrate and this is nitrite. Okay. Same thing if we look over here with uh, the sulfur containing polyatomic ions, sulfate and sulfite. The one that has one more oxygen ends in eight. The one with one less oxygen ends in eight. So SO4 is sulfate, SO3 is sulfite. Now you're gonna notice that the eight and eights don't go with any specific number of oxygens. A lot of times people will call these oxy anions because they have a lot of oxygens in them. Um, but um, you'll notice here that um, the sulf sulfite has three oxygens. Well, the nitrogen uh, polyatomic ion uh, with three oxygens ends in eight. So this one with three oxygens ends in eight. This ends in eight. So the eight and eight is not connected to the number of oxygens, but connected to the one that has less oxygens. So the eight has less oxygens, eight has more oxygens. Nitrate, nitrite, uh, it follows, you can also see right here, there is chlorate and chlorite. Now there's four of them with chlorine. So the one with two and three oxygens are chlorite and chlorate. You want one more oxygen than chlorate, they put a per in front of it, it becomes perchlorate. And you want one less oxygen than the chlorite. Uh, between these two, chlorite has less oxygens. But if you want to go one below uh, the number of oxygens, one less oxygen, you say hypochlorite. The prefix hypo means below. Like a hypodermic needle is a needle you stuck, stick under your skin you know, to give you a shot. It goes under, it's called hypodermic because it goes under your skin. Um, but these are all the different uh, polyatomic ions. And we're going to see plenty of compounds with these as the anion. Okay, and they they take some extra kind of learning how to work with them. Okay, and, uh, I normally have my students memorize these, and there's a quiz on them, and I'm not sure if I'm going to do that yet. It is important for people to kind of take the time to to start internalizing these, um, but I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to how I do that. Um, so um, you know, in, in the quizzes that we take and the, the Google forms. So let me see if there's a way that I can kind of 
uh, figure that out because I find if I don't quiz people, they don't even pay attention to these. And when it's time to use them, they have no clue they even exist. <laughs> so uh, that, that's why I, I, I quiz. I don't think it's completely, uh, you know, the end of the world if you don't know all your polyatomic ions. But if I don't make people learn them, a lot of people don't even know they exist. And they're going to be found a lot in the rest of the class. Okay. All right.